solution consistent with international law is for this illegal occupation to come to an immediate, unconditional and total end. Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al-Maliki demanded an end to Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories at the top UN court in The Hague on Monday, as the International Court of Justice opened hearings on the occupation's legal status. The case follows a 2022 request from the UN General Assembly for an advisory or non-binding opinion. The genocide underway in Gaza is a result of decades of impunity and inaction. Ending Israel's impunity is a moral, political and legal imperative. Successive Israeli governments have given the Palestinian people only three options. Displacement, subjugation or death. These are the choices, ethnic cleansing, apartheid or genocide. Israel denies those allegations. It captured the West Bank, Gaza and East Jerusalem, areas of historic Palestine which the Palestinians want for a state, in a 1967 war and has since built settlements in the West Bank and steadily expanded them. The United Nations has referred to the territories as occupied by Israel since 1967 and demanded that Israeli forces withdraw, saying it is the only way to secure peace. But its 1967 resolution didn't specifically label the occupation illegal. More than 50 states will present arguments before the ICJ over a week, including the United States, Israel's strongest supporter, China, Russia, South Africa and Egypt. Israel will not, although it has sent written observations. The case opened as concerns mount about a planned Israeli ground offensive against the Gaza city of Rafah. And less than a month after the World Court ordered Israel to do everything in its power, to prevent acts of genocide in Gaza in a separate case. The 15-judge panel is expected to take about six months to issue an opinion. Judges have been asked to review Israel's, quote, occupation, settlement and annexation, including measures aimed at altering the demographic composition, character and status of the holy city of Jerusalem. Israel has ignored such legal opinions in the past, but this one could increase political pressure over its war in Gaza which has killed about 29,000 Palestinians, according to Gaza health officials. It launched its assault on Gaza after Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th, killing 1,200 people, according to Israeli tallies. In July 2004, the World Court found that Israel's separation wall in the West Bank violated international law and should be dismantled, though it still stands to this day. With the Nakba that ensued, over two-thirds of our people were systematically and forcibly expelled by Israel. There is no safe haven. It means discriminating both colonialism and apartheid. There are those...
Uh, we have over one and a half million people crowded into a very small uh, corner of Gaza. Uh, they're weary. Um, they're, they're exhausted from, being, from moving from the north to the centre and on to the, to the south of Gaza. They have nowhere else to go. Um, there are thousands of children who have been without school for months. Uh, the trauma that they have gone through is extraordinary. How can anyone contemplate adding to that trauma? Um, and that is beyond me. It is simply an inhumane act and would be an inhumane act. Um, and um, that the hostages should be released and, we, and, and, and Hamas should lay down its arms. What Hamas is doing is uh, absolutely unacceptable uh, and we've condemned Hamas's activities from the beginning. Uh, but the world um, is, is, is shocked and, and the people on the ground and out in the streets are shocked at the level of inhumanity that's now happening uh, within Gaza um, itself. Uh, the most important thing would be that Hamas would lay down its uh, weapons in a situation where this is uh, not the case yet. Um, uh, I made very clear that uh, Israel has the right of self-defense but has to comply with international humanitarian law. And in a situation where over a million people uh, went down to the south of Gaza because the IDF uh, told them so, they cannot just disappear in the sky and uh, therefore it needs protection for those people, it needs humanitarian protection. The people have to go uh, home, uh, should be allowed to go back home uh, in the north. And for all of that, we need a humanitarian ceasefire, and this is what uh, we are heavily working on. Thank you very much. The United Nations has been very clear that the uh, cu currently an extension of uh, military Operation in Rafah will have very dire humanitarian consequences for the innocent civilians that are there. Uh, at the same time, we hear very clearly, of course, the different voices from the Israeli War Cabinet, their intent uh, to proceed. The timing is, seems to be a matter uh, of discussion. With the Nakba that ensued, over two thirds of our people were systematically and forcibly expelled by Israel. There is no safe haven. It means discriminating both colonialism and apartheid. There are those...